San Jacinto Battleground State Historic Site. I've got some exciting news. The battleship Texas used to be there. They took it to go get a total makeover, and I'll be talking about that soon. But we are going to talk about the San Jacinto Monument today. On April 21st, 1836, General Sam Houston shouted the encouraging charge, Remember the Alamo! Remember Goliad! The Texian army rose victorious against Mexican President General Santa Ana at the Battle of San Jacinto, winning the state's independence. The San Jacinto Battleground State Historic Site recognizes the birth of the Republic of Texas. A 570-foot-tall obelisk, the San Jacinto Monument is the biggest in the nation, 15 feet taller than the Washington Monument. Ride the elevator to the top for phenomenal views of Houston and the region. We rode the historic Lynchburg Ferry to reach the San Jacinto Monument property. And I've done a video on the historic Lynchburg Ferry. You'll want to watch that. The museum is open Wednesday through Sunday, but the park grounds are open daily. And there is so much signage and some great hiking trails. Texas declared her independence at Washington on the Brazos March 2nd. For nearly two months, her armies met disaster and defeat. March 2nd, William Barrett Travis and his men sacrificed their lives at the Alamo. March 6th, William Ward was defeated at Refugio. And March 14th, Ammon B. King's men were executed near Refugio. March 16th, and James Walker Fannin and his army were put to death near Goliad. March 27th, 1836. General Sam Houston wanted to collect on that debt owed by the Mexican army, and he did it here at the San Jacinto Battleground. The monument was erected by the United States of America and the state of Texas in 1936, dedicated to the heroes of the Battle of San Jacinto and all others who contributed toward the independence of Texas, April 21st, A.D. 1836. Once inside the gorgeous structure filled with fossils, you will pay if you want to go to the museum, theater, and the observation tower. We made a beeline for the elevator to go up to the observation floor, which is 489 feet high. The monument is 570 feet high. Once atop at the observation deck, you will be able to peer through slatted windows in all directions. One of the greatest things you'll see is the Houston Ship Channel, which is one of the world's busiest ports and provides significant economic impact to the state of Texas and the nation. Approximately 9,000 ships and 200,000 barges traverse the channel annually. You will see a variety of marine vessels. Some of the ships are used to carry the unrefined crude oil into the refineries and petrochemical sites that line the ship channel. The greater Houston area is known for having some of the best seafood dishes, including shrimp, redfish, and more. That's an understatement. These marine vessels often depart in the early hours of the day and return before noon with their catch. Some of the more frequently seen passenger ships are the Lynchburg Ferry, as I previously mentioned, the Sam Houston Houston tour boat and the battleship Texas. A few years back, they took the battleship Texas, put it in dry dock, and gave it a total makeover. On March 5, 2024, she was sent back afloat and will be parked in Galveston, Texas at Pier 21, and a new museum will be established. What's crazy is last week we went to Galveston and to Pier 21 and the Strand, and we'll be doing videos on that soon. As we peered out the windows, the thing that caught my eye almost more than the views was, again, the seashells in the rock of these walls and steps of this historic structure. Isn't that awesome? As you look out the observation floor windows, you will see several industrial companies lining the Houston Ship Channel, back downstairs, and to some very awesome artifacts. After the Texas Army's victory at the Battle of San Jacinto on April 21, 1836, the victors helped themselves to souvenirs from the Mexican camp, including items from General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana's tent. Among the items taken was a gold-covered snuff box that is decorated with fruit and foliate designs. The central engraving depicts an officer and his men overlooking a battleground. Do I need to tell you what a snuff box is? Well, it says here that since the 17th century, snuff boxes have been used to contain powdered tobacco. One of the other amazing artifacts is Sam Houston's automatic pen and pencil. General Sam Houston and Stephen S. Austin are two of the most important men in Texas history. About this artifact, this is a combination automatic pencil and pen from the early 19th century. This writing utensil belonged to the first president of the Republic of Texas, 
Sam Houston. To use either the pencil or the pen, one would slide the separate bands along the shaft. Isn't that beautiful? And here is a letter signed by Sam Houston. And there's something really interesting about his signature. Sometimes it's signed S-A-M like Sam, and sometimes he capitalizes the A. Because I have heard he signed I am Houston after Houston was named after him. So that there was no doubt who Houston, Texas was named after. Have you subscribed yet? If you have, thank you. And if you haven't, please subscribe now. There were other documents and memorabilia about Texas independence in this fabulous museum. You will want to walk along the grounds and see the actual battleground site and this display called the San Jacinto Flag Court. It has some interesting flags and the information about each one. One of the most famous ones is the Come and Take It flag. The women of Gonzales celebrated the first battle of the Texas Revolution by painting their cannon and famous slogan onto a white field. According to some accounts, Sarah DeWitt cut up her daughter Naomi's wedding dress for the fabric. Stephen F. Austin's volunteer army carried the Come and Take It flag with them on the road to Bear. However, both the cannon and flag were abandoned on the journey. Across Independence Parkway, you will find a statue of General Sam Houston. And this is also nearby where the battleship Texas used to be moored and where we have visited it on several occasions. Can't wait to see it after it's gotten its makeover. Also, there is a cemetery filled with informational markers and many headstones and graves. We walked among the different graves and found this sign and these two little cannons. They were placed by the San Jacinto chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas. They have placed 20 boulders to illustrate the battle fought there, which won the independence of Texas. And these little cannons? They're called the Twin Sisters. I hope you can go and visit the San Jacinto Monument and Battlegrounds at some point in time. New, ugly shoes on the ground, unclassic road trip. Thank you. (laughs) 